to the meeting of the Ware Board of Selectmen. We started at uh, 6.30 um, with uh, non-public to interview potential um, tax collector candidates. And it brings us to 7.30, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Which leads us into public comment. No, no, everybody's still warm in the seats, so I'm going to say no. Okay. What's the waste seat time? Department head committee items. Chief, do you have anything? I can't show you. Public. Public. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Show you. So obviously, the board approved a website design. Mm -hmm. Did we really though? Yes. Last okay. year, this is our prototype so oh, far. That's too bad. <laughs> yeah. Who's but if you compare it to. Uh, oh, it's pretty fancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last year's. Uh, what, was it this Paul is working on that? Or? Uh, Paul was going to, but it ended up being the, so the lieutenant has a degree in graphic design and. I had ideas, and he said, your ideas just aren't working. So he kind of took it over. <laughs> he, as you can see, the end product, it looks great. That's where we're going with it. Very user-friendly. Where is this taken? River Road? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Hatch takes those photos, so it'll be an uh, ongoing change of pictures yeah. as you go through. So. Very nice. Mm. Mm. That's done through, it's going to be a sub of ours, right? Correct. And if you look up top, the town is also linked in, so they can go straight to the that, town yeah. Watch yeah. website, right. right from ours. Because uh, we looked at, if you remember, we looked at doing it, and then you had a different price, and then Civic Plus is the one who does the town, so we engaged in a sub account kind of thing. Yeah. Um, at a good price. I, I, I can only assume that looking at this, um, there's a couple links on the top, and this would be the mobile app. So if you push 911, it would dial it from the website of the Ware Police Department. Yes, we haven't seen the mobile version yet, but it, mm -hmm. it, it will be a mobile app. That's also. that is the intention. Wow. High speed. Mm -hmm. Top notch. Okay. Nice. I like it. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you, Chief. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, it's coming. Yeah. Getting there. Okay, brings us to meeting minutes. Wow. Scoot right along here. Um, from 224, that's where we'll start. Uh, if I can find them, that would help. Well, I just, we got them tonight. I haven't even read them. Got Did we get them? Yeah. You guys? Yeah. yeah they got were them. I thought we, uh, we, no, we had them the you 21st. Had, you had them done, yeah. Yeah, we had them the 21st. The only ones that yeah. were new should be the first. Well, this was in my package. That's that one. Right, right but, um, well. Oh, I, but the I meetings, the, the minutes were mailed out, though. Oh, they were emailed, yeah. I guess I missed them. Yeah, they got the 224. Yeah, yeah, they are. Downloading. 27th, so. Come on. Game on. Okay. I think I think on page one. Page two. And on two. And then on three. Four. And five. Can I entertain a motion? Make a motion that we accept the minutes uh, 224 as submitted. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oops, Opposed? I wasn't here. Okay. Uh, and then we have 3-1. Three, 3-1. One. Three, one. Three, one got done on your Yep. Sidewalk. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, this was, I just emailed Karen real quick of basically what we, um, Sherry emailed me, the members that were there from the War Historical Society, 
Um, and then I just put together a quick paragraph of what we did and what we saw. And um, so, yeah, that was my notes and what time we were there and what time we left. So, um, entertain a motion. Make a motion. We accept the minutes for March 1st as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Extensions? One. <laughs> What's in <it> there? <laughs> Okay. Only meetings have missed. Yep. And the manifest. I'll look along one and today, one. Okay. Uh, order the treasurer to sign payroll accounts payables checks dated March 12, 2020, as including the following manifest. Payroll manifest of $51,159.30 weekly payroll. And accounts payable manifest of $148,262.21. Fire Department accounts payable manifest of $3,817.04. John Stark for $250,000. Ware School is for $300,000 for a total of $753,238.55. The following manifests were previously ordered to be signed at the February 24th meeting um, for a payroll manifest of $56,712.94 for weekly and fire monthly payroll checks dated 3-5. And an accounts payable manifest of $49,794.43 for checks dated 3-5. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four, five? Yep. Five. Um, I have a couple of things actually that are not really on the report. The oh. report's not extensive because most everything says we'll wait until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Basically, I'll do that and then I'll go to my other. So, if you look at the um, administrative report, not the buildings, um, I did give you the e subscriber to the website. We have 182 as of 3 4. Um, class 6 road discussion that gentleman wants to be on next Monday night's agenda. Okay. Uh, 9, we did tonight the tax collector um, potential interviews. 10 was something that we'll end up talking about. It was just popped into my mind, so we'll talk about it whenever. Um, 11 um, just is a normal week, so that was pretty fair, straightforward. Um, the government building ones, as I said, I just updated number two for your site walk because you conducted it on March 1st, and it's my understanding that um, kind of anything is on hold until after town vote anyway. Mm -hmm. yep. So I just added that, and then the same thing with 10, we talked about in our last meeting about a freeze alarm, fire alarm, we're also mm -hmm. on hold until after that. The rest of them were on there mm -hmm. two weeks ago, kind of at limbo until. Mm -hmm. um, the two things that I have are not on there. <coughs> I'll let, um, so there's, there was a, evidently a lot line adjustment on Renshaw Road. <laughs> so I'm going to let Jack, um, because they're looking for the board to approve it. I guess Benji's looked at it and it's okay, but um, there's some sort of an agreement. Um, there's some shuffling of the road, but I'm going to let Jack take it from here. Um, well, Deborah Gilbert came in before the planning board, and it's for a lot line adjustment on Renshaw Road. When that road was put back in, back in the mid-80s? Oh, yeah, yeah mid-80s. Mid-80s. And um, at the time when it was first put in, there was only one residence down there behind, and that was Renshaw's. Mm -hmm. And then it continued on down as a cul-de-sac down in there now. But um, part of the way the road was in was over onto these people's property. Um, and, uh, and it was uh, the Enid, uh, Deborah Gilbert and Enid McKenzie. And they came forth to the planning board, and what they want to do is they want to give us back the right to the road because part of the road runs over their property. So it's going to be a lot line adjust adjustment, and we're going to uh, um, move that, and, and you know basically they're paying taxes on our road. <laughs> so um, they've uh, you know it brought before the planning board. They laid it all out. I have a, a map for a lot line adjustment. Um, if you're interested in seeing how it. much of the road is actually on. Probably a, uh, about half, uh, close to it. Not wow. quite, but there's quite a good chunk really? of that on the corner. There's a corner. Oh yeah, there, yeah, so. right at the hairpin. Yeah, so yeah. I think that um, uh, it's uh, in, in the interest of everybody. 
To do it. Um, yeah, it's this it has all the markings, you know, 160.20 feet. You know, it's it tells you where the markers are, but it's somewhere in the area of about 93 feet, mm -hmm. 95 feet. So, I mean, it would be a lot more advantageous to us and to them. Um, it's along the curve uh, to the left, having a radius of 570 feet for a distance of 86.97 feet. So, is the point of beginning. So, I think that that is like I said, to our advantage to do this, and it makes it better for them. And we have a... Um, I don't think we have to sign that. No, we have a copy of the information, the deeds. All we know is if we approve it, then uh, Kelly will take care of the rest of it, and I will right. mark the it. Deeds, the deeds have been approved by council yep. on our side. So on our side. So all we have to do is just say that All we, you have to do is say you're in favor of it, because you guys are actually on the road. Yep. And I'm, I'm in favor of making it right. And then it's well, done. Yeah. So I think someone should make a motion. To uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, um, accept, accept uh, the lot line adjustment um, between Enid uh, McKenzie and Deborah Gilbert of 42 Renshaw Road to um, adjust the lot line. So In the town of Ware. In the town of Ware. So the town uh, will not control the whole road instead of going over their property. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Some mutual. That's yours. Yeah, so I'll just put a yep. I'll put a note on it approved. And she'll take care of it. Um, the other thing I'd like to just mention is um, back in the fall, the uh, law firm of DTC. I guess there's a lot of people. DTC lawyers, yeah. um, Donahue Tucker and San Chandinelli, whatever, yeah. um, in Exeter. So you recall that you keep seeing a legal bill from them in regards to this right of way. Um, so public service, um, I'm sorry, Eversource, Grand State Telephone, Fairpoint, all these people that use the right of ways. Um, we tax them for the use of our right of way. So there's been, they're still in the middle of a lawsuit, which is why you do see the bill every now and then. So there's been some movement, and they reached out to us because we're one of the 40 towns that are help pay for the lawsuit, um, largely because I think we've got Eversource and others waiting in the wings. And what they had like us to do is to do a comprehensive public right of way ordinance. And what they're, they're going to do is take the lead on it. And the 40 clients would each work, we'd work with them, all 40 of us. But it's $1,000 from each client. And at the end, you would have an ordinance or a regulation that knows when Eversource or Granite State wants to come in and put their stuff in the right of way. They can know exactly what they need to do, and they're going to know that it's taxable. Um, so the thousand dollars, it says the work will be in common will not exceed a thousand dollars from each client. Um, what they're looking at us doing is signing the agreement to join in, and at the end we would end up with regulations regarding. It's called a PROW regulation, which is public right of way regulation. Um, and what does the town get? We're going to get a, a regulation to adopt. Right, but what what do we do? Do we end up getting then money from yeah. them? Yeah, yeah well, we'll it's get a right now. Well, we're going right, to pay out. There's a lawsuit, and it's been going on for how long? We're still yeah, paying. four and or five years, right. or longer than that. And, and then it's, you may have an abatement. Yeah, so what it is, it's now, it, it's going to be able, so now we have teeth to enforce the taxation of these poles or underground. That's we're underground our, wiring. Right. It's on our right of way. Right, mm -hmm. so you can tax them in our right of way. Mm -hmm. So right now we're nothing, but they're they're fighting it as well because, mm -hmm. I mean, Eversource is one Us of and our 40 lives. others. Yeah. Yeah. So we would end up taxing them like so much a mile? It would be, they'd come to some understanding. So much each pole. Square footage. A lot of it, they yeah. go so much per pole. Poles are in the right Right. Wires the right underground, right. Right. underground right. for how many feet, you know. Mm -hmm. But feet. it says that it would be, it will not exceed a thousand dollars for each client, and at the end, we'd have them regulations created right. that would be adoptable and it enforceable at that point. Takes them, yeah. they're doing it, so it's I think it, I think it's really short money to where we're still mm -hmm. paying. Now. Yeah, I I'd, I'd be in favor of it. So I don't know if you want to 
It's almost too bad they didn't do that a part a long time ago. Okay, well, so, yeah. I think this is how yeah. things surface from there because everybody has jumped on more. So yeah. if you look at Fairpoint, um, Eversource, Granite State does a little bit. Cable, Cable's another one. Cable, mm -hmm. um, you know, the best so ability. So if you're all set with it, I need you to, I'm reading this, I'm sorry. If you want to um, be part of getting this, you have to acknowledge that you agree to do it. Yeah. I know there's a way of writing it. Acknowledged. Okay. It's a special council representation, representation agreement for a PROW ordinance. Um, if you want to read all this, this came with this at the end. Um, several pages, but I think in the long run it would be... Beneficial, I'll try and put that to bed. To yeah, because yeah. I mean, it's been a, it's been but going on years. But you need a motion and I think the authorization of the chair, because there's only one signature. Yep. And it's been, um, I know that it's been going on for probably 10 years anyway. And it's... A long time we've been, I yeah. think John asked what the bills were for. I think we're still fighting over yeah. it. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that it's been... You know, towns have taxed them, and then the next thing they end up in a lawsuit, and you end up abating it, and, and, then, up abating it it, and then it goes back mm -hmm. and forth, and it turns into a real It'd be a huge abatement. Yeah. So, if you want, there is like only one signature line. So, I'll make a motion that we authorize the chair to sign the uh, P R O W W agreement with uh, Donnie Tucker and Chandanelli attorneys. One second. All in favor? Uh, I, 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 sorry, we're keeping you away. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe you need to take a nap. I do need to take a nap. This hour is not doing me well. Trust me. <laughs> this change in was time. that four or five? Five. Yeah, five. Yeah. The change in the uh, time zones. Um, <laughs> okay, so what do we do with this? What's, I'm sorry. Do we have to do anything? It stays on file. I think that's the ordinance. Well, no, we'll end up with an ordinance after. That's for the uh, that's their agreement. agreement to work. Okay. Yeah, they're going to send us the final. There's some information we're going to have to give All right. them. I just yeah. That's I just want to that's, that's the contract saying that we agree to it. <laughs> so two weeks ago on the twenty well, two weeks ago on the twenty fourth, um, I gave you guys an application for welfare. Yes. Um, or assistance. Yep. Um, did you have a chance to look at it? Yes. Yes. Very, okay. th very thorough. Okay. We we made a couple. Of, we made a change right out of the gate in it, right? Yeah. On that, remember it was, it was there was a discrepancy. Oh no, that was never mind. That was the never mind. Yeah, I was gonna say. That was a, that was a tax. That, that, oh, that was a tax collector yeah, right. ad in yes. the yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Um, no, I remember that. Just now. so that you guys are all on board with it, um, Karen has spent a lot of time, and I think she did a great job. Mm -hmm. Is she just wants to so that you're aware? So if we get a client mm -hmm. that um, she's dealing with, she wants to make sure that you also know what's on the application that's required of people. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that was a, a fair way of. Yep. Yep, absolutely. So it was just uh, basically the adoption Jack. of it. Yep. Um, after I, I would like a couple conversations and correspondence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, I have a couple correspondence, and then I have a non-public after Chief Moore's non-public. Oh. Mine is um, C. C. Okay. <laughs> you say so. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it, your report, though? That's all I have. I said, I'm waiting to see what we're doing tomorrow. All right, tomorrow. we are under the correspondence of the business tab. Does the board have anything? Well, what, what, what was, okay, go ahead. I got a, I had several phone calls about I think it's gonna link into the two mailers that yeah. were sent out. I just want, just first of all, um, under correspondence, I think I believe I shared with you um, this isn't, I think, new, but just if we do cease and desist or if we do things like that and you need to file the court system, that's electronically. I believe I sent that to you. Yes, you sent that to us. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You did. Just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, I, I guess, I mean, I'll let you guys chime in as well. Um, first thing that arrived across everyone's desk or home is. Um, 
the messenger on page 12 with a letter to the editor. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it, but I'd like a copy. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, you read it. I didn't and I guess, it. you know, we work together fine. We put everything out. I don't know what more we can do for people, but I think what, I'll tie, them all, I'll tie two of them together, is the yellow one that you also received on Saturday. And I didn't get that. the... The yellow one that went to everyone's mailbox on Saturday, um, we were harped at for a long time about transparency. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I thought we were transparent. We provided everybody everything they could imaginable. We even put together a binder for public hearing. Um, nothing was hidden. The $300,000 in excess um, there was a little more than that. I mean, we gave everybody to show everybody how much that was. So it sounds like it was a shocker mm -hmm. where it really wasn't. We've provided everything. Um, the one thing that I just want to reach out and just say that the letter to the editor talks about um, when you vote March 10th, you may be an uninformed voter. My problem is it you know, an uninformed voter we can train. What do you do with a misinformed voter? And I would, I think a misinformed voter, which I lead to the yellow sheet, is more costly than an uninformed. Mm -hmm. um, I just wish, you know, I know it catches the news and it catches everybody and it certainly caught an awful lot of um, Facebook attention because I receive phone calls and emails and I don't even have Facebook. Um, you know, I know the article talks about um, an $8,500 increase, or they all call it a pay raise. I don't think we ever determined it was a pay raise. We called it a wage adjustment all the time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a raise. Um, and largely, you know, let's explain to people why there was $300,000. Mm -hmm. Let's explain that it, you know, it was because we couldn't hire people or keep people because of pay, mm -hmm. pay ranges. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was between the fire and the police. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's share that. Don't just la hang a carrot out that says that we ended up with $300,000 in excess. Do you really need to increase the budget? Well, I think we were transparent and returned it, and we're just asking for it again. Right. I mean, I think we could have, we it. could have taken it and encumbered it and, and done Spent and reduced it. it. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to be up front and we wanted to put it out there. But tell people why there's $300,000. Mm -hmm. He's looking for help. He's already been out there. Chris has already been out there telling people that if we don't get any help, and he's dropped three in a month right. because of the money. So right. but tell people that. Don't make it sound like, you know, that we're hiding something. And, and it talks about the game begins, you know, in the article. And it's just, it's too bad. I mean, people are going to yeah. go and vote. But we also spent, as taxpayers, we all spent money on this. On the mailer. Yeah, on the mailer. Sorry, you can't see me. Yeah, the town mailer. We spent money on the town mailer as tax people, taxpayers, to put both sides and let you decide. Mm -hmm. You know, we told you what the purpose was. We were very good at not to encourage you how to vote. The Finance Committee also responded, and out of the group of 13, you know, they decided as a group, this might not have been everybody's popular vote, because obviously four of them wanted to go and spend the money to, to put out their, the, their side. Mm -hmm. But I think when you belong to a committee, that whether it's right or wrong, that'd be like two of you wanted to put a mailer because you didn't agree to something else. I think once you agree to being on a committee, whether you like it or not, you can go behind the curtain and have your vote. You can go talk to people in it. But I just think it does some damage after what we worked so hard for, and mm -hmm. we've been upfront and transparent, to not tell everybody what it's about. Right. You know, to tell everybody the $300,000 was for for positions that we don't pay enough. One town over pays $5 more an hour. Right. You know, we it, it's just, it's too bad because that's what makes the news. Yeah, and, and you know, and to, to follow up with that is, is again, um, you know, the, the people that mailed us out were on the Finance Committee. Um, <clears throat> and, and that $300,000 was made up mostly from 
uh, Chief Moore's salary line, the fact that we could not put those positions in place. Um, you have to have the money. So if, if, you know, if we hit the lottery and four, four candidates walked in and said, hey, I want a job to wear PD, we got to be able to hire them and pay them. We don't have the surplus. It's not surplus. Um, and that money then came back and went, and I always get these two f mixed up. Is it the unexpended or is it the un unanticipated? Well, unanticipated, unanticipated is revenue. Right. But, but it goes into the fund balance. It goes into, they both. They both. Right. They, they, it goes into the fund balance. And it brought that number back up to a reasonable number because when we set the tax rate, it was below yeah. what the Department of Revenue says we should have. And, that, and, and again, that $300,000 that was given back by very fiscally, mm -hmm. you know, concentrated people, the, the chiefs, they came back and, and, and returned it because they didn't use it. And we put it in that, in that fund and it brought us back up to that 5% with a little bit of spare. Yep. You know, um, if, I mean, again, it's, I mean, and, and like Naomi said, we could have taken that $300,000, earmarked it and spent it. Yeah, or encumbered it and held it to the next year. We, we could have bought a, a plow truck and that mid-range or bought a, bought a, a cruiser two, two and, and a plow truck. Yeah. Yeah. We could have done that, but we didn't. We put it back in where it belongs. In we the, did the right thing. And the other thing with this, you know, is when that was brought before the Finance Committee, they, they didn't just look at this and, and rubber stamp it. And, that, and that's been out there that, you know, there's been the fact that they just rubber stamp this stuff for us. And they didn't. They spent a lot of time on it. They, they were did, very they, diligent. Very they diligent. They did their due diligence. And um, they didn't. And, when the, and the bottom line of it is uh, the vote come down. It was eight for it out of 13 people. Eight for uh, voted in favor of the, the budget. Um, or the, the town uh, four portion, against. four against, and one abstained. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I, I think that, you know, to, to, to some of the stuff that's in there is not accurate. That's you know, correct. And you're looking at the mailer, it tells you what the what it actually breaks it down as mm -hmm. to what it is. And I, and I think that this is, you know, and where it's, you know, and, and yes, it's their legal right, the four people from the Finance Committee, they want to put that out there, but I, I, I'm not sure it's exactly ethical. I, I, I don't think it's ethical, my personal opinion. But, um, uh, you know, it's, now it's like, mm -hmm. okay. Um, you know, and the difference between the, the proposed and the default budget is not a lot. No. And I think that, you know, it, if we're going to go forward, we can't keep going backwards budget-wise. I mean, right. everything increases. It even says that in their own mailer about what the increases are. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we have, to, we have to meet those increases because if you don't, the first time you don't, how many times have we had default budgets and then you're playing catch-up ball? Every, um, and we're still and, in that boat and now. You're ten, and you're now, because if you have, you know, we had, what, 11 years of default budgets, we're now like 15 years behind because oh, you've got, all to, that. You've got to pay, you got to keep playing catch up and catch up. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and in reality, our tax rate has not grown mm -hmm. um, that drastically. You know, we've kept up with it and we've, we watch the pennies. And I mean, we watch them. The Finance Committee did a great job of watching them. So I think that the. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I just wish this was accurate. Yeah, me too. I wish it was and more I guess, accurate. I, I mean, you can print anything you want, you can say anything you want, freedom of speech, regardless. Mm -hmm. um, the accuracy is really what bothers me because it's, mm -hmm. I feel it, it rolls over into a misinformed because yep. it's eye catching, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. because it's cool, you know, ooh, we're going to have a savings. Um, mm -hmm. But I just also want to tell you that one one of the signers on here, you all know, um, you know, we were sued by Mr. Kirk over the default budget, and how many times did he stand up at both deliberative session and here yeah. and inquiring about the default number for the four elections that we have to hold? Mm -hmm. And now he's asking you to vote default when he was asking you to increase the default mm -hmm. to four. Yeah. We would have put it better, even so, if we did I mean, that. Let's be transparent. Mm -hmm. we're, yeah, we're held to that, and I think we've done a darn good job being transparent. Um, but let's tell everybody the whole story. Yeah. You know, it's nice to put out a little mail <coughs> in the last hour, but let's tell everybody the whole story. I mean, the whole know. story, yep. The, the other part of that, the, the, the kind of, you know, they, they accuse us of being underhanded and hiding stuff for pay raises. No, we did salary adjustments for the fact that we, you know, to keep people, key people that are extremely important to us and that we cannot go out and, and take the chance of trying to replace them and start all over again. Um, 
No, you don't know. We know we've game. got the two quality, two quality people that we did. Well, One we did. The library and, hasn't been successful. And, and the library has not been successful. There's three, but I mean, at this point, we have two, two key people. One of them... Uh, we did a salary adjustment, and the other one we have not, and that's a mis misquote in it that we gave them money. Well, there's two different numbers, so if you read one, yeah. one article says 85, one and says, says eight. But we have, eight. Not, we have not done the salary adjustment for the, the road agent, and that's been proposed. So um, we'll see what happens after tomorrow. But the mm -hmm. thing is, is that, um, you know, be accurate. Don't be mm -hmm. throwing that out there, and I mean... Um, to try and replace these people cost us twice as much than oh, if we gave them that money. Minimum. I mean, minimum. at least. So between, we between trainings and everything else? And try. Oh, absolutely. Chris, Chris is sitting here, and Chris is a, you know, it's going to be devastating. You may not have. I mean, I don't want to say it, but, I mean, the economy is well, and there's people looking at other places. Um, it would be, hate, I'd hate to just see things happening. Mm -hmm. um, he's... I've said that if he keeps losing people, he's going to have to either have no department or down to 12 hours. And I don't think the yep. community from 20 hours to 12 hours would be a huge loss. Step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to be going backwards instead of, he wants, he's instead of forwards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he throw his gum away, so. and it, well, it's, it's pretty much what I've been saying all along. And the individual, I haven't read the flyer, but the individuals on the flyer, have heard what I've say, said, which directly impacts the surplus that we saw with the police department. We have multiple vacancies. We've lost three people so far this year. Uh, Mr. Broth, who's the city attorney, la our labor law uh, attorney, says it costs 44000 every time we have to replace someone. Unfortunately, the pool is so small from where we have to draw to place them, uh, for, for us to draw on to replace those individuals, we can't fill our vacancies. Uh, we just did the Great Bay written test, which is the first start in our in our hiring process. We had four applicants who were interested in the town of Ware. We scheduled them for the uh, next phase, which is the physical agility test. Uh, one withdrew, waiting for that to come up. Three were then scheduled. On a test day, two showed up. One of those failed. So we were down to one applicant who is looking at about eight police departments. The odds of us getting him are extremely low with our current pay. And that's the reality. When we talk about our budget, when we have a vacancy, uh, we're budgeted for a step one employee with a master's degree. If I'm able to get officers who are already certified from other jurisdictions who are going to be leaving their jurisdictions, we don't recruit them, but if they're looking, well, we're, you know, they contact us after we put out that we're looking for people. I'm not going to be able to bring them in at step one, meaning we're going to be paying them higher amount than what we're budgeted for. So if this isn't balanced where we can do that, we're not going to be able to fill our department. Mm -hmm. Did everybody follow that? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So that's why this misinformation is very de detrimental to what I need to do as a police chief and to run my department effectively. So. It's detrimental to the town, not necessarily the town, is the school. Sure. Because in the school yeah. side, I sat through all of the meetings and what's not told to you in here that the state of New Hampshire approved a house bill that is mandating the bus company transport the kindergarten. So we have two kindergartens morning and afternoon, so they have to make bus runs in the midday now at the tune of about $65,000 oh because the state mandated us to move these kindergarten children by bus. But where is that in here? You know, um, it, it's, it's not. And, and that's why I'm saying there's a whole lot of information that, you know, we can pick and cherry pick and do what we want to make things fascinating. And you can write an article however you'd like to write it. But all I ask is I've spent years here, and I think you guys have spent a lot of time here, is we can respectfully disagree with one another at the end of the day, but just give everybody the facts and let them decide. Yeah. Don't give them half a fact or give them a carrot or give them some inkling that sounds good because a lot of times, and I always said this, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But, you know, just put out the facts and let them decide. Right. We have enough clever people in town. We have a lot of taxpayers in town that stay more informed than people know. Mm -hmm. um, and I have seen some really poor, 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 poor um, posts on Facebook shared with somebody else um, because I don't do Facebook, but I know someone has. 
and there it, it's gotten beyond even the articles it's really gotten into some really nasty comments about mm -hmm. you know people with children versus people not with children yeah. and i don't think that's even where that belongs no no i would agree so all right any other correspondence other business i think we've wrapped it yeah, pretty good yeah. all right uh with that said I will move we go in the non-public under RSA 91A3, Roman numeral 2, A and C. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Me. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Thank you. We'll be adjourning after. We are going to have another non-public afterwards with yep. uh, town administrator, but we'll be adjourning afterwards.